Hi everybody. So it's a miserable rainy day here in Nottingham and I thought let's do a new video and we'll do a nice clean and simple-ish, my version of clean and simple uh, card using the floral curio stamps. So let's take this lovely little screen off and show you what I've got ready already. So Floral Curios is one of my all-time favourite collections of stamps and I'll, show, I'll go through them all with you in a second just so for those of you that haven't seen them before I can show you the whole collection. Um, it's one of the most versatile collections of stamps I've done and when I designed them I designed them specifically to give you lots of scope and lots of ways to use them. So you can go the mixed media route if you want with lots of splats and lots of inks and everything or you can go really clean and simple and pretty. And all of them have the the choice, they, they, they all give you focal flower, flowers where you can cut them out and decoupage them. You can see I've already got some elements cut out just to save a bit of time today. And it's one of those collections that I'm always drawn to. I always come back to the Floral Curios because there's just so much you can do with it. So I've got lots of bits ready today just to save a little bit of time because we are going to do some heat embossing. We are going to do some layering up, some decoupaging of these stamps. So I'm going to move everything to one side. I don't know why I put it all out there like that when I know I've got to move it. But it just is so you can see how pretty we're going to go. Now, Floral Curios, like I say, it's just one of those collections of stamps that I'm, I'm constantly drawn to. You know, as a designer, as a designer... Uh, there's always a collection of stamps that you think, mm, yeah, absolutely spot on. And I think this is it. Uh, and there are, uh, well, there are seven A6 stamp sets in the Floral Curios Complete Collection. Currently on the website, so if you go on the website, do, 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 where is it? Let's find that lovely little link. There you go. So if you go on the website and just search for Floral Curios, remember it's Curios, not Curious. Curios, yeah. The full bundle has currently got a massive 15% off. Now, I haven't done that. That'll be the girls at the shop. It'll be Karen that's done that, my sister. <laughs> so take advantage of that massive saving. And I do believe for for the weekend, for the coronation weekend, I, I'm positive that there is an extra 20% off as well for the weekend. So Saturday and Sunday... Um, but just check the website it will it will tell you at the beginning or have a look on the social media uh, the honeypot crafts facebook page it'll give you the code uh, i think it's coronation all in capital letters that'll give you another 20 percent off the whole collection which is it's a huge 35 percent off now that is fantastic anyway so enough of that. Let's show you this fabulous collection of stamps. So I know some of you will have seen these before. Uh, and if you have and you've already got them, fabulous. Thank you. Hopefully I'm going to show you another way to use them today. And for those of you that haven't seen them before, I'm just going to take a second to go to go through them. So as I mentioned, these are all A6 stamps. So they're not too big. And each collection, ha well, there are two. So you've got the Posey collection. And the one that we're looking at here is the Posy Collage. And I'll flip it over in a second so you can see the size of the stamp. This is the one that I'm going to use today. So you can see we've got the roses in there. We've got the pansy. We've got the beautiful leaves, the foliage, the swirls and everything going on. And let's just flip that over. Oh, <laughs> that's a good start, Phil. <laughs> that's hilarious. Right, let's swap that over. Oh, it was all sounding dead professional. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, and as if by magic, there we go. So you can see this is the one I've used and used. It's a well-loved stamp, this. Um, and it's a really good size. So if you like to do a little A6 size cards, this is a this is an amazing focal point for that. I remember as well, you don't have to use these in their entirety. You can just use sections from these stamps. And they just keep on giving. So that is the Posy Collage. And then following on from the Posy, remember I've just said there are three three sets per, per collection. So this is the Posy Corners. So the Posy Corners, I'll flip it over now, we know it's got the right one. You have a large version, you have a smaller version. 
And then because there was space there, I put all these gorgeous little textures in there. So these two little borders here are actually what's on the edge of the uh, posy of the posy corners. So you can now use two of these in a corner and then just do planar on the other two. And then you've got that gorgeous texture, well, three textures going on there as well. Great for your backgrounds, great for stamping around borders. So that is the posy collage and the posy corners. And then these absolutely gorgeous posy circles. I love these so much. So if you've got circle dies, which I know a lot of us have, these, these are amazing for that. So you've got the same flowers. So you know that these are, this is like a trio. So these are going to work perfectly well together. You've got the large circle. Let me just measure that and tell you how big that circle is. So roughly that is a nine centimeter circle. So amazing again for smaller cars, for big cars. And then you've got a small version and the small version is four and a half centimeters. And then, of course, you know I don't waste space on stamp sets. So you've got more textures in here. You've got the little ink splat. You've got the circles, the uh, coffee stains in the larger and then again the smaller. So that is the Posy, the Posy collection, which is what I'm using today. I'm using the Posy collection today. I can't choose a favourite. They're all beautiful. But I am, I am drawn to this. I think it's because of this large flower here. So that is the poses, which I will pop to one side because I'm using that today. We're then going to move on to the Corsage collection. So the, you can see straight away that these are going to, these are all going to work together. So we've got the same rose, we've got the same large flower, but this time instead of the pansies and the smaller flowers, you've got daisies tucked in there. So collage again, so it's the same format and thankfully it's the right stamp. So you've got the large collage stamp. And then you've got the corners again and different textures. So already, hopefully, your mind is going 10 to the dozen thinking, I just know how, how I can use these. All these amazing little textures, worker stamps, everybody calls them these days. But you already know you're going to get lots of use from them. And the same, same format again. You've got the large corner and the small corner there. And then we've got the corsage circles. Same again, look. Oops, upside down. I'll flip it up. So you've got the large circle. You can see it's a different one. It's not exactly the same. You've got bigger ink stains on there. <clears throat> you've got a larger coffee stain with some splats in it. And then a smaller one with three. And then the small circle again. Oops, let's just see if you can... I mean, look how incredibly detailed these stamps are. So that is the trio of uh, corsage stamps. So as a whole collection, let's just put these together before I get on with working. So as a whole collection, look how gorgeous these stamps are. But you know what's missing from there. I will remind myself to drink as well. What's missing from there is sentiments. So as part of the complete collection, these, these come with it. <clears throat> so you're actually going to get seven A6 sets. And these are the smudged sentiments. These work perfectly, absolutely perfectly with the Floral Curios collection. And what you've got here are smaller sentiments. So you've got your happy birthday, birthday wishes, have fun, best wishes, have a great day, which I love. And then you've got happy birthday as a port, as a landscape, as a border as well. So you've got 10, 10 little sentiment stamps in there. They've all got that lovely little teeny tiny ink splat detail at the end of them long. So if you do treat yourself and you go for the complete collection, that is what you're going to get. And how fabulous is that? You, you already know, just looking at it, how you can mix and match this set of stamps. So you can use the posy circles with the corsage, uh, collage. You can mix and match the corners to create even more. The scope is just unbelievable. So that's pop that away. Oh, let's keep the... Um, Keep the posy collection because that's what I'm using. I will get on to it. I am getting on with it. So I'm not going to show you anything else until we actually get to the stage where I'm going to use them. All I will explain to you is what I've got here. So I've got here, this is just, this is a really simple card. It's a really easy card to do, but it looks fantastic. And it looks like you've spent hours on it. 
uh, when in actual fact we haven't. The stamps are doing the work. All I'm doing is stamping and embossing. There are no additional die cut flowers going on this. The only additional thing I'm popping on this card are three of my shabby butterflies. So what I've got here are, uh, you know me, <laughs> you know me, I've got one, two, three, four, I've got five layers on this card. You don't need to do that many. You could absolutely make this into an A5 card. I just like to make big cards. And the base layer of this is 22 and a half by 18 and a half. And they just graduate. So my top tip for matting and layering is to mix them up, look. So if I show you on this corner, so we've got a larger border going to the base, a large one there as well, but smaller, and then it just gets smaller each time. The embossing folder I've used, because if you're doing, top tip, top tip, if you're doing white on white cards, uh, clean and simple, white on white, an embossing folder is an amazing addition. It adds texture, it adds some depth, and it also gives you, um, a little bit more detail in the background. So the one I've got here is my, uh, I forgot what you call it, Did a beaded, beaded scallops, a scallop, be, beaded scallops or something like that. It's on the website. Look how gorgeous that is. It's an eight by eight embossing folder with all those beautiful beads and detailing in. So let's get on with this card. I'm not gonna talk to you about coloring mediums until we get to that stage because I am going to be colouring some of these elements in. Not all of them. I want it to be really subtle. But what we are going to start with is this piece here that I have embossed. And I already know that I'm going with a purple lilac theme today. So I've chosen Villainous Potion. And I'm just going to bray her slightly over there. So I've got my oval, which is what the main focal image is going to go on. But I do want to add just a little bit of shabby, shabby, uh, inking over the over the embossed areas so let me find my I can't find it so this one will do so a little bit of kitchen roll my small brayer so I've got my four inch brayer I need another bit of kitchen roll surprise surprise because I am going to take some of this excess ink away and just make myself some space Put the brayer there, put my water brushes there, and put my other piece of kitchen roll to the side. So I'm going to add the ink to the brayer and I'm going to take a lot of it off. Villainous Potion is a beautiful, beautiful shade of purple and it is quite rich and decadent. So when I come to colour in my flowers, I'm actually going lilac and lighter shades of purple. Um, so I wanted a contrast, which is why I'm going darker. So I'm going to put some ink on this brayer. And I only want this to be shabby. I don't want to cover the entirety. I don't, you can see already, look. I've already matted this embossing folder onto a piece of, another layer, another piece of card. I don't mind if it goes on there, it won't matter. So I'm putting the ink on the brayer and I'm just gonna roll off some of the excess onto my kitchen roll. And I'm very lightly gonna pop the brayer on and just roll it over. I'm not applying any pressure. Oh, that looks gorgeous already. I'm not applying any pressure. Top tip, everybody. Let the brayer do the work. So I'm trying not to catch everything. I don't want everything to be inked. Let's just do a little bit more. It's just background detail. It's just detail in the background. And that's always been my motto. It's always been my thing. Take care of the details and the project will look after itself. And as if by magic, I've managed to do that. That's how deep these embossing folders are. I've managed to do that without getting any on the edge. Look at that. Oh, that's just so beautiful. It might look, it might look black on your screen, but I promise you it is purple. It's Villainous Potion, which is stunning. And that is all I'm doing with the ink today. So I'm going to clean my brayer. Always clean your tools. If you look after your tools, they'll look after you. 
So I'm just going to wipe off all the excess ink from this brayer. Luckily the distress oxides wipe off quite easily, look. And look how much ink there is on there. So that's just cleaning my brayer. And then another little tip for drying them is just roll them over your kitchen roll. It doesn't really matter about drying them. They are hard red rubber. So this is the reason I had the hard red rubber brayer instead of the soft speed ball. Because it, it doesn't catch the card where you don't want it to. Right, so now I've done that, we'll pop that to one side and just let that dry. Remember, distress oxides do take a little while to dry, which is why I've done this first. If I put my thumb in that now, it will smudge. So let's just put it to one side out of the way. Right, here we go. So we've got a couple of jobs to do now. We are using my uh, pure silver embossing powder, which is a super fine, you can see there, look, it's a super fine embossing powder. So it picks up all the intricate, tiny details in, in the stamps, which is exactly what we want for today. So I'm gonna stamp and emboss this uh, main image twice. I have, ho I have uh, already done some decoupaging, but I wanted to do this with you live. So you can see how well these stamps emboss. I'm going to get a drink because <clears throat> my throat's dry already. Surprise, surprise. Anybody would think that I talked a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we've got here is, oh, I almost forgot to tell you. I've got here my uh, stitched torn oval. I love these dies so, so much. Let me see if I can show you the detail a bit better. There you go. So we've got that gorgeous uh, torn detail. And then you've got the debossing stitched. And for anybody that doesn't know my dies, debossing is my thing. Um, I love debossing detail. It's very, very rare that I do a die set that doesn't have that detailing. And what's really special about that is, can you see how beautiful that debossing is if i flip that over it doesn't pierce the card look it goes halfway through the card uh, which is a specialist technique so i've got the in the manufacturing it's a specialist thing that i do in the manufacturing process it makes them a little bit different to ordinary dies so these are the stitch torn ovals and you've got 10 dies in there and it is an a5 uh, a4 set so you've got all the way from your eight your eight inch right down to the teeny tiny well, you've got that 20% off or 15% off whatever it is on the website this weekend. Take advantage, because I would. So we're going we're gonna to emboss this now. I'm using Versamark. I would always recommend Versamark because it's a little bit tackier uh, than some of the others that are out there. I have used Perfect Medium in the past and I love that as well. But I tend to use Perfect Medium more for my dirtier jobs like when I'm embossing onto grey board etc and we are going to anti-static this so I'm using my little anti-static bag and that's just simply because this oval is going to be the main topper for the card so I don't want the embossing powder going where I don't want it I will also just dust it over this extra piece because we're going to emboss this twice or we're going to stamp it twice so I don't know why I've got that there, because I don't need that there. And we're going to move on to the stamping platform. Uh, another little tip for you. If you haven't got a stamping platform, uh, my DL block, I'm just trying to find my other one as well. Here we go. So my DL block and my rectangle block, my A6 rectangle block, look at the state of these. <laughs> that These stamps all fit on these as well. So just do whatever's easier for you. So let's do the oval first. And I know already that the posy collage, which is what I'm using today, will fit perfectly in this oval. I mean, look, at, look how beautiful this stamp is. And more importantly, you can do it portrait, you can do it landscape, you can, you can use sections of it, like I said. So let's get this on here. Now at this point, look, I'm just going to give you a uh, look at me full of tips today. 
So at this point, when you've got an oval or a circle or a square and you, you're not sure, like I'm not sure whether I want the large flower at the bottom or whether I want it at the top, and it really doesn't matter. So if you get the acetate, because the acetate has, has the printed image on it, you can just put it where put it on your, your card that you're going to emboss onto and just see what it looks like in both both directions. I think I prefer it. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go... Oh, I don't know. Because it looks fab both ways. I'm going to have the big one at the top. There you go. Which is a change. I've changed my mind because I was going to have it at the bottom. So let's just pop that on here. And I know, with the exception of a couple of the little splats, that this stamp fits onto these ovals perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. So let's just get that angled a little bit. I want it like a straightish a straightish uh, embellishment. Let's see if I can get that on there a bit more. There we go. So let's do this one first. So I pick the stamp up. You can see how much I've used this stamp. Look how dirty it is. And that's that's just from the the Versafine Onyx Black. It does stain your stamps a tad, but it won't matter because we're going to emboss this with silver, and it just. The silver embossing, any of my super fine embossing powders will look amazing in this card. We could have done it copper, we could have done it gold, we could have done it black. We could have done it white on black. <clears throat> so many choices. And if you're new to heat embossing, I am stamping this quite heavily, look. If you're new to heat embossing, uh, oh, I, they're not all in here, but I've got loads and loads of different colours of embossing powder. Just have a look on the website and knock your socks off. This card would look amazing in any colourway. Right, that should be enough. So let's just give that a good press. Remember, there is a lot of detail in this stamp. Let's put that back in the middle so you can see what I'm doing. Ignore the ring light above. So I've pressed onto this already, and a little tip for you, if you've got a large stamp, just roll your hand over it like that, look. And that should be fine. Look, that's the ink from before, told you. I have cleaned the stamp. It's just that Versamark does tend to uh, lift off some of the ink that's left from when you've cleaned your stamp. That won't matter. At least we know it's got plenty of... Um, Got plenty of verse mark on. This is all going to be coloured, covered up anyway. So now we're going to. Oh, look at this! This looks beautiful before I've even melted the powder. Look at that! How stunning is that image? So we'll pop that to one side. I'm not going to heat it up just yet because we'll stamp the other one. We'll do two, two birds, one stone. While we've got the embossing powder out and the heat gone. Let's just put that out there so I don't knock it over. And then this one doesn't matter because it's uh, I'm going to cut it out. So this is just a scrap. I know it's a big scrap. It's from my matting and layering. There we go. That'll do. I w you can get two on this, obviously, but I'm just doing this for quickness. Hey, the good thing is, <laughs> the good thing is, the more times I use Versamark on this stamp, the more of the more of the gunge is taken off from the Versamark. They're versified. <laughs> and let's just get this one done. This one doesn't matter too much because I am going to cut this one out. I want to show you just how easy these are to cut out. There we go. And I'm just going to clean that stamp. That has been cleaned. Believe it or believe it not, this has been cleaned. I told you the Versamark just re... re... Um, 
reactivates that. It just reactivates the black ink that was already on there. Oops, pop that there. So I'll clean the stamp. I'll pop that away in a second. I'll just give it a minute to dry. And then we'll get this covered in silver powder. If you haven't done heat embossing before, if you struggle with it, um, I always forget to tell people this because I do it instinctively. But if you look, I've got my card on an angle and I let the powder roll roll off, roll, uh, I'll put your teeth in, Phil, roll off the image. And if you're not confident, I mean, I know that that's covered, it's covered because I've done it twice. But a little tip for you is if you if you find that your images have patchy bits, just turn it over and do it from the other side as well. And what happens with that is the powder, the embossing powder is catching the image from both sides. So that means if there are any gaps in there, it will it will catch it one way or the other. And now we're going to heat emboss this. Wait till you see this image when it's embossed in silver. I think the I think this is why I'm this is why I chose these stamps for today. Because you look at the you look at the packaging and it's always a bit of it's always a little bit tricky because when you see stamps on the website, when you just see images, you look at them and you think, oh I don't know, that might be a bit grungy for me. Uh, because the image is always printed in black. And it is it, there's no there's no way around it really. But what happens is when you see it in another colour, you think, oh do you know what, that looks fabulous. So I've got my heat tool and I'm going to do it on the, the fast speed. So I'm just going to give it a, and I'm going to heat it from underneath and I'll try and get it close to the camera so you can see it change. Uh, I might just have to come away when I get towards the end so I don't burn my fingers. So I'm heating from underneath and this is a personal preference. I've always preferred this. So if you heat from underneath, the embossing powder takes a little bit longer to melt because the heat has got to go through the card and what you end up with is a lovely smooth line rather than a patchy line. So just let your heat tool warm up for a second. And I'll start at the top where that leaf is, just at the top. So you need to be about an inch and a half, two inches away. Remember not to scorch your card. See if I can get this in the shot. I'm starting with the leaf. Oh, there you go. You can see that changing. And I'm not lofting. I'm just following the image around. And I'm just going across to the other side. I can't see it properly because it's a bit of an angle. There we go. I mean, look at that. How beautiful is that? I'm just going to flip it over and I'll just move my way around the whole image now. I'm trying to keep it so you can see it go but I'm trying not to burn my finger at the same time. Even those tiny little dots look amazing. So if you, get, if, you, if you don't like doing ink splats and things like that, you don't need to with these. It doesn't look too much. It's just like, it's almost like pulling around the edge. I've nearly done. And then I'll show you this in more, in more detail in a second. Make sure I've not missed any bits. I have in the centre. Oh wow. That looks incredible. I'll bring it in and show you in a second. And I'm just quickly going to do the other one. I'm going to give you another tip in a minute. from one of my pet hates. I'm just working my way around. I'm trying to keep it in shot for you to see it, but not burn my fingers at the same time.
How beautiful is that image? I hope you can see just how beautiful this stamp is and how many different ways you're going to be able to use it. And I think that's it. Just make sure I've not missed any bits. No. So I am going to use the, the heat gun again shortly. Let's just show you a lot. I'll show you on this one because it's both the same. Look at that. And if I bring that in really close, can you see just how smooth the lines are? absolutely stunning and you could you could leave it like that because white on white with silver just looks really classy and elegant anyway you don't necessarily need to color it in we are going to do some coloring i'm not coloring the whole image i'm just going to color in the the three focal uh, flowers and then this one, so what I'm going to show you is one of my pet haze when you're using embossing powder is that it kinks your card a little bit, look. And there's not really a way to get around that because you're obviously um, drying the fibres in the cardstock. So what you do to fix that is take your Mr. Bottle. I always tell you this, this is, I tell this tip all the time. So take your fine spray, Mr. Bottle. I'm just going to turn to the side to do this. And I'm just going to mist it on the back very lightly. So maybe just four or five mists. That might have been seven. <laughs> and then I'm going to pop it underneath one of my heavy, one of my heavy tubs. And that will weigh that down. So while we're waiting for that, we'll cut this image out. And I'm cutting the whole image out of this, um, except for the leaves. I'm going to chop the leaves off. So this is going to be the first layer of decoupage. So I'm just make this a bit smaller. So the leaves are coming off. And don't worry about this because it won't matter if you've got little bits of white showing around the edge. Uh, it's a white on white card, so it, it doesn't matter. And remember, glitter is your friend when uh, when you're cutting stamped images out. <laughs> so the swirls are coming off because there's no way I'm going to cut around the swirls. And I am just very quickly cutting around this image. And I'll bring it in and show you in a second. Very easy to cut out and embossed. Uh, well, I'll take that little flower off as well. It's very easy to cut out an embossed image because you've got stronger lines from the embossing powder to cut them out. So I'm going to go around the splat and chop the leaf off. So the two leaves are being chopped off. I told you they were easy to cut out. I'm whizzing around this and anybody that knows me knows I'm the most impatient, worst at cutting out ever. I don't have patience. I've got loads of patience for cutting 200 flowers out for a card, but not for this. Oops, the leaf's coming off, Phil. And this is just a beautiful, beautiful image. Just making sure I don't forget any of the leaves. So this has now become my first layer for the decoupage. So we've, we've taken an image that's as big as that look. And we've already, already just from a little bit, I'm just going to trim that up a bit. I made that a bit of a, a bit too close. There we go. We've already transformed that image and made a smaller image. And that you can see actually, if I pop that there, 
you can see exactly what I've cut out. Oops, oh, you can if I bring it close and show you. There you go, look. So I've omitted all the leaves and that little flower at the side and the swirls. How fab. I love stamps that give you lots of, uh, lots of scope. Let's have a look at our embossed image and see how that's doing. Where are you? Yeah, we're getting there, look. Now look. Well, it's almost 100% perfect. And I'm happy with that, thank you very much. So now what we've got here, look, is our layers of decoupage coming together. You can see where I'm going with this. So to save time, what I did was I already cut, uh, I already cut and embossed some extra layers. So let's just show you what I've done. If, if you, I mean, I assume most people know what decoupaging is now, but for those of you that don't, it basically just means the image gets smaller. The image just gets smaller towards the top. So the top layer is just a single flower look. And, and honestly, I can't tell you how easy this was to do. It's literally just taking 10, 10 15 minutes to stamp, to stamp the image and emboss the image three or four times. Well, one, two, three, four, five, including the actual base, five times, and then cutting out the bits that you like to cut out. And what I did, so how you choose which bits to cut out is start from the bottom. And like I've just done there, look, I've literally just missed off the leaves and then I've missed off a couple of flowers and then I've missed off another flower and then I've just gone with a single at the top. It'll look beautiful when we're done. And I'm just gonna show you these because you need to see these. I've done these ahead of time because you've seen me do the stamping and embossing. You don't need to see me do it loads and loads of times. But this little beauty, I love these corners so, so much. So this is the small corner so remember you've got the large version, so you could absolutely do a large, a large, a small and a small. But I've got the small one here and I've stamped and embossed this four times. How beautiful is that? Look at the detail in this stamp. Wow. And can you see where I've cut? <laughs> I told you I'm the worst cutting out. Where's it cut it out? I've literally just followed the shape of the pattern of the flowers. And I've done that on four so that I've got my four corners done. And these will, so we've, we've taken a stamp and we've literally made four corner embellishments for this card. Right, so we're gonna color in now. Uh, I need a little bit of scrap. This will do, just so we can check colors. Oh, but before I forget, all the bits that I've saved, look, from my cutting out, I've saved them. So these are the bits that were left over because if you want to, like here, look, I've saved a leaf. I've just saved a leaf because you can always go back in and add more. So don't throw them straight in the bin. I've kept them. Right, so now we're gonna color in. And we've got a few different choices. So one of the things that I love now about um, my product range is that we've got different mediums to color in with. We've got quite a few mediums to colour in with. If you wanted, you could colour these in with your ink pads. You can obviously use your watercolour blending brush pens. Yeah. I'm assuming most of you have these already. I am we've got we've got no set ones left, but we have got set two, set three, and set four. I'm debating whether to order some more set ones. But I will let you know. You don't need set one. It's just there if you want it. And then we've got a couple of options. We've got the metallic paints. So if I wanted a pearlescent finish, a metallic finish, we've got all the beautiful metallic paints. There are some missing there. There's 25 altogether now. So you've got the metallic paints. These are on the website under the Flawless Media brand or Paints and Mediums. Let me just put that straight because that will bug me. We're not going metallic today. So I'll pop them back on the shelf where they live. And then we've also got the Radiant Lustre Pigment Powders. And the color, the color choice is just huge. It's just huge. So these are the, you won't have pink ink on your label. <laughs> 
these are the lo radiant luster pigment powders and these are the powders that you can turn into paints pop them in spritzers uh, very highly pigmented you need a tiny bit and again they will give you a pearlescent metallic sheen I'm not using those today what we are using is my chalk paints because I love these paints so so much so these are the chalk paints and what we'll get with these is a lovely soft matte chalky finish yeah uh, which I absolutely love. There are there are 15 more colours coming soon. So top tip, get them, get them before the new ones come. Uh, and because we've got the metallic from the embossing powder, this is why I've opted for the chalk paints. And I know I'm going purple, lilac, lemon, and we might have a little touch of orange. I'll pop the green in just in case. I'll show you the colour. So it's a very soft colour palette we're going with. It's a very soft colour palette. So let me tell you the colours. So I've got African Violet, Pretty Periwinkle, Custard Slice, Perfectly Pumpkin, and the last one, the green, is Soft Pistachio. And we're going to take these paints and dilute them with water, which is what I think is amazing. So I already know, look, that on the base image, I don't need to really colour the... I don't really need to colour the base image in. So I'm going to start from the top, which is this flower. Just get a sheet of... Surprise, surprise, kitchen roll. I'm going to start from the top and work my way down. And I am using my water brushes for this. So I, I do six different water brushes. We've got the, the regular ones, which are the fine, the medium and the large, like, like normal ones like that. And then we have the flat tip brushes. Where are my flat tip? Oh, here they are. So the flat tip brushes are the ones that, well, have a flat tip. <laughs> but these are great for your backgrounds and for doing colour washers. They are, look. They're great for that kind of thing. So it's worth having both sets in your crafty toolbox. But we're using the fine one from the Fine Tip Trio. And I'll just show you, oops, just tighten that up. So you can see here, look, mine is actually stained. The bristles of mine are stained. And that is from colouring with the Radiant Luster Pigment Powders. Because the powders have pigment in them, the pigment will stain the water brush. Won't harm it, look, so it's not transferring any colour. You just need to clean off, clean off. It's the pigment that's in it. So I'm just going to colour this in very, very quickly. And I think we'll go, we'll go lighter with this one. So this is the Pretty Periwinkle. Oh, look at that colour. So I'm going to pop that there. I'm just going to make some space. And we'll do the corners at the same time. So I'm not colouring every single flower in this. I'm literally going to colour just a couple so that it's still got some... Uh, well, I'm going to colour three or four flowers in. So I'm going to take some paint from my lid. I'm going to pop it on there. And then I'm going to mist it with water. You can colour direct with these if you want stronger colour. But I'm looking for a lovely watercolour chalky finish. There we go. So do mix the chalk paints well. I can't lift my mat up to show you, but hopefully you can see that this is a diluted version of that colour. As ever, check the colour on a, on a bit of card. So that is very, very soft. I'm going to make it a little bit stronger. The more paint you have, the stronger the colour. But I want this watery. And because we've got the embossing, you could do this with a paintbrush, really won't matter. Because we've got the embossing, it will resist the chalk paints when it dries.
So I'm trying to keep in the wells. And I'm starting with the top one because this is the one that's going to be seen the most. Oh, that's just so beautiful. You can already see how that's drying and it's drying relatively quickly. So I know what you'll be thinking, how long does it take to dry? And the answer is, it depends how wet you make the paint. So it's already starting to dry. So 10, 15 minutes is plenty. And I'm just gonna show you another tip because I have, I have gone over the embossing powder there. So I'm gonna see if I can salvage that because these paints have chalk in them. Even though we've diluted it, that's how good they are. That's too much, take some of that off. That's better. Even though we've diluted it, the chalk will still, there we go. So if that happens, look, and you go over, where's my tweezers? If that happens and you go over your embossing powder like I did there and it dulled it, just wipe it off while it's still wet with a baby wipe or a bit of tissue. And then just go around it again. So although it does resist, I'm just going to free it again a little bit, but I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to add more colour look by dobbing. I'm not going to spend ages on this. I would do normally. I'll stop at that. I'll put that there. And I'm just going to do the same flower on the smaller, on the corners. So it will, it will just coordinate. Oh, it's so delicate. It's, I, please, when you do, if you do have a go at this card, do show me the photos. So if you're on Instagram or anything, just tag me, Phil Martin, or tag Sentimentally Yours, and I'll get to see, I get to see it. I love to see what other people make. Especially when you have a go at something that I've shown you. That's too much. Let's take some of that off. There we go. I would normally spend a good half an hour colouring in. It's so relaxing. And I don't know whether you saw what I did there. I'm just going to show you again. So when you're doing the small areas, so I still pick the, still pick the colour up on your water brush, but just drag it to take off the blob of water at the end. Oh, so delicate. So pretty. So pretty. I'll try and do this quickly, but I don't want to spoil it because I love it. Here we go. You could obviously colour every part of this in. And if you do colour every part of it in, the finished image you're going to get will be stunning. Oh. And I've just realised there is a second one of these flowers in here. Of course there is. But because it's the same flower, it needs to match. Yeah, that's it. The others are different. Let me just come back. And I think this is why I love these stamps so much. You could change it every single time you use these stamps. You could change the look. You could change how it looks, how it feels, just by changing the colour of the flowers you use. And that is fabulous. A stamp set that just keeps on giving you creative choices. Love that. So, of course, because I've coloured the top one now... I don't need to colour I don't need to colour that flower on the rest of them because it's, they're not going to be seen. What I would say to you is if I had time, I would just go around the outside edges. 
I'll bring that in and show you in a minute. I can't wait for you to see this. I would go around the outside edges with the colour just in case they are seen from the side. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. But doesn't matter if you do, doesn't matter if you don't. It's entirely up to you. And I'm being really, really quick with this. You could take as much time as you wanted. And do leave it to dry naturally. Oh my word, look how beautiful this is. I've just stuck my finger in it, but look how beautiful that is. And I've just stuck my finger in it. That's it. You can always fix it. I love that so much. So I'm not going to put the centre colour in until that's dried off a little bit. Oh yes, 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 yes. So keep the lid off because I know I'm going to come back to that colour in a second. And then we're going to come to the next image down. Oh, which is this one. So the next image down is this one. So I already know that that is going over. That is going over there. Look, so I don't, I don't really need to colour it. But I do need to colour this one. And we're now going to move on to the next colour. I'm not going to get rid of that paint there because I know I'll probably top it up. So we're going to move on now to the African violet, which is a little bit darker. I'm going to do the same thing again. So it's still purple tones. But it's a stronger colour. Yes, that's just lovely. So this rose is going to be this colour. In fact, both roses are going to be this colour. So I'm not colouring that in because I don't need to. I'm just going into the rose. <gasps> Look at this colour. That is beautiful. And it, this, is, this is like cheap water colouring. So when you get to small areas like I am now, just dab the brush. So just dab rather than try and paint it in a normal way. And let the water find its own place. I'm not going to rush this and feel free to fast forward. Until I've done them all, but it's nice to see it coming together as well. Oh, that's so lovely. Oops, I forgot to dub that off. Not to worry. How therapeutic is this? Oh my word, there's just nothing like it. Look at that. And now I'm gonna move on to the next, the next image down. So I am gonna do the same color for this rose. I'm just see which one it is, that's that one. And then I need to come to the corners to do the rose in the corners. But this time, I think I might make it a little bit stronger, just so it's a touch different. But you know what? I'm going to go straight in. Uh, which one is it, this one? I'm going to go straight in. And then I'll add water... I'll add the other colour on top of it. I'm just trying to liquefy it a little bit. And 
So we've now got another another shade of purple going on here. And do be careful when you get to the little bits when you've got less water. Remember the more water oops, the more water you have the softer the colour will be. The least water you have, the stronger the colour will be, as you can see with this. But I am going to do, I'm going to show off and add some of the other colour on top of this. Just to dilute it a little bit. Oh wow, that's just beautiful. Let me just do these corners while I'm here before we come back to that. So in the corners there are two roses. So we can do one rose the same way. So one rose that's a little bit darker. And these are anybody can do this anybody can do this because these are just the teeniest tiniest spaces i'm literally just letting the paint fall into the little areas and it's building up this beautiful composition so just bear in mind that it'll start to It'll start to lose a bit of colour as the paint runs out. I might just get away with this. Maybe not. Literally dobbing. Dub, dub, dub. Very technical. Not. Okay, so now we've got that there, just take off the excess and we'll come back to the lighter shade and do the other rows. I'm sorry if I'm coming off the screen. I'm sorry if my head keeps coming in the shot. <laughs> Oops, I forgot to take the excess off, not to worry. So. So we've still got those lovely two shades of purple going on. And this is all drying quite nicely. And, and uh, I forgot to tell you, I'm not using watercolour card for this. This is literally my pure white, my pure white premium cardstock. So providing you don't have it saturated, the pure white cardstock will tolerate some water and it won't buckle and bend. So just as long as you don't saturate it, remember, you will be fine. And I think there are two other roses on there, but I'm going to leave them because I only want the focal images done. Can you see how this is coming together? Let me show you. How easy this is coming together. Fabulous. Right, so we'll move on from that. And I was going to lighten that, but I'm not. I actually quite like that. So let me just show you, look what's happening. Oh, that's, that's just stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. So now we'll come to the next image down, and I might not color anymore let's just see I might do a mix let's just see I might do a mix oh that's lovely that is so beautiful do you know what I'm not 
I'm going to leave it as it is. We do need to colour the centre of these larger flowers and I'm going to do the leaves. So I'm going to leave the, I'm going to leave the flowers now as they are. And this is a tip. So depending on how much time you've got, obviously you could colour absolutely everything on this and it would look, it would look incredible. But I'm just colouring elements from this. And what that does is it draws your eye to those to those particular elements, obviously because they're coloured. Uh, where's my bit of kitchen roll? So just clean my brush. Do remember to take the colour out before you move on to the next one. And we are moving on to green now. I'm going to do a little bit of sage on this and I'm just going to do the leaves. So that I think there's only three or four leaves on here anyway. Uh, this is soft pistachio, I beg your pardon, not sage. And this is a beautiful, beautiful colour again. So rather than go dark green, we're going a lovely... I've called it pistachio, but it is like a sage green. Let's just make that a little bit thicker. There we go. And there's the emergency services, right on okay. cue. That's what happens when you live in between two hospitals. So let's just do these leaves. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'll bring it in and show you in a second. It's a beautiful soft colour. So if your colour palette is nice soft shades, if you like the delicateness of pastel colours, the chalk paints are for you. But just remember, with all the metallic paints as well, you can dilute all the metallic paints. So it's a, it's a marvellous array of colours that we've got already. And just by adding water, more or less water, as you've seen, look, that is actually the same colour. You, you, the world is your oyster. You can just, you can just go for it with the colours. The more water you add, the paler the colour will be. And these are artist quality paints. Remember, these are not, these are not just things that I've chucked together. I've missed a leaf there. I'm keeping them all the same colour rather than making one a bit darker. So I told you it was a clean and simple-ish card. I didn't say it was a quick one, although this is, if you were sat at home doing this, you'd do it a lot quicker than I'm doing it now. I'm just trying to make sure you learn from me while I'm doing videos. That's the whole point. Make sure I've not missed any leaves. Oh, that's just lovely. Look at that. So let's clean the green off now. And we'll come to the centre of that large flower. And I'm doing a little bit of yellow and orange for the centre of mine. So we're going to have lemon. I'll just pop that to one side. So we're going to have lemon. Remember, I only need to do the corner, oh bugger, I forgot to do the, <laughs> forgot to do the leaves on the corners. Oh, let me do that first, sorry everybody. Pause, fast forward, rewind. <laughs> I forgot to do the leaves on the corners and nobody told me. <laughs> it won't take a second. So where are the leaves on here? One, two, there's only two. Oh, three, I told you a fib. It, 
does make a difference though, look. And the others quickly, 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 quickly. So when I was prepping, this will make you laugh. When I was prepping this video, oops, too much water again. I thought, oh, it'll only take me about an hour. And we're already just over an hour, but there's not a lot still to do. It's just drying time and the sentiment. And glittering, obviously. And the whole point of today was to A, show you what a good investment the Floral Curio stamps are. And just how versatile they are. And this this little this little bit of colouring that we've done so far looks nothing like the packaging for the Floral Curios. It completely transforms it when you introduce a little bit of colour. Right, so now let's move on to the centre of the flowers. I've probably got another five minutes of colouring. And then we can put them to one side and let them dry. So remember, I only actually need to colour the top one and the corners. So I'll just put the corners there so I don't forget. So I can move that to one side, move that to one side. And just bring in the corners so I don't forget them again. And we're going with a yellow-orange mix for the centre of this flower. But I'm going to do it quite soft. So Custard Slice is already a very lovely, gentle lemon colour. And I'm going to dilute it even further. You can see where I've been using it, look. And I am going to dilute it even further. I mean, can you see that? Can you see just how soft it is when you change, when you introduce water? I, I love paints, I love paints because they just give you so, they just keep on giving. So I'm just going to dab this in. And the reason I've done this after is because I didn't, I wanted the outside of the flower to dry before, I mean what a waste, I'm still the others. I wanted the outside of the flower to dry before we pop that in so the colours didn't bleed into each other. So let me just do the centres on here. And there should be two on each. And oh, oops, I've just stuck my finger in that poor leaf. Always, always, always leave it to dry naturally. If you try and, if you try and force dry that with your heat gun all it does is blows the colour around so let the water soak into the card and let it dry naturally there are other jobs you can be doing while this is drying and that is enough of that two 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 Two, two, two. Clean that up. And then the orange, which I don't need to get on the corners. Oops. The orange, which is perfectly pumpkin. I'm going direct. And hopefully I won't smudge it into the yellow. So I would normally leave that to dry properly. I would normally leave the yellow to dry properly before I put the orange dots on. Uh, but I am going to go for it. And I'm literally taking this direct. I'm just going to bring it towards me a sec. Sorry, everybody. bring it in and show you because it does make a lovely difference remember we've got the embossing powder which is giving us a bit of a a bit of a resist that just 
just looks fabulous. Just that teeny tiny bit of orange. Oops. Right, we are done with colouring in. I'm not colouring the butterflies in, I'm leaving them white. So I'll just bring that in and show you. I've got, I don't know whether you know, but I've got my computer screen in front of me there and I'm, I'm going to turn it off in a minute because there's loads of things keep popping up. How beautiful is that? And do you see what I mean about that lovely soft chalky finish you get with these paints? It's so delicate. Right, so we've now, I can't really get any orange around the centre of the corners because it's too, it's too dainty. Do you see what I mean though? Look about just cherry picking a couple of flowers and it just makes the whole image pop. We could have, we could have done the, the pansy and the roses. We could have done the pansy and this. We could have done the outside. Such a lot of scope. Right, now let's move on. Let's get some work done, Phil. Just so I'm just going to give these all five minutes to dry. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you enough. Leave them to dry naturally. You get the best results. It allows the... Look at that colour. Wow. It allows the uh, water to evaporate and soak into the card, which gives you a better finish. So while we're waiting for that, we're going to come to our layers. So we are now going to pop this onto another layer uh, with foam tape. Surprise, surprise. There's going to be two or three layers of foam tape on this card. We have still got the sentiment to do and we are embossing the sentiment. And we are going to use a different one to what comes with the floral curios. And I will show you in a moment. So if you're watching me with a cup of tea and it's getting cold, we've probably got about 15 minutes left to do. That's all. Oops. So we just need to let the paints dry, which 10, 15 minutes. So by the time I've done all the other jobs, the paints will be dry. And I don't need that one. I don't know why that layer's still there. Let me just check I've done that right. I have, of course. <laughs> so this layer's going on foam tape. So I have just removed one of the layers, just in case you didn't notice. So we've now gone from a five layer card to a four. Because I am going to glitter around the edge of this layer. And do you see what I mean about the shade of purple? So the Villainous Potion, Distress Oxide. Oh, hang on, my slippers fell off. Here it is. So the Villainous Potion, Distress Oxide, is a perfect backdrop for these lovely purple lilac tones, look. And we are going to pop that onto this layer on foam tape. As ever, just do your little bit of glue, give you some wiggle time. Don't go mad with the glue. It's just enough on the foam tape to give you a bit of time to wiggle if you need to. Oh, oh, that embossing folder looks nice both ways up. That's just, oh, sorry if I've just head butted the camera. Fabulous. And this is also, surprise, surprise, going on foam tape. But in my defense, I have removed a layer. <laughs> so we are one, we are one layer less on this card. So I can do foam tape. <laughs> and you know, I don't post my cards. I may, I may, I don't know whether you're the same. Are you the same? I know we make cards to give to people, but I, I make cards that I like myself. The, the fun for me is in the designing and the composition, putting together a card and all the little elements that make it special, like taking time to do the bit of painting, etc. And let's face it, our hobby is, it's not a cheap hobby. So you want to, you want to benefit from it. 
so relaxing, chill out, stamp and emboss some images and colour them in. And if I do, if by any small miracle I do send anybody a card, like my mum for example, it's hand delivered. <laughs> Oops, make sure it's right way up, Phil. You, you can hear me, I always stand up. I usually do this sideways on as well, but I think we're all right today. No, oh, that's just beautiful. It looks nice before I've even put anything else on it. So now I am going around with the uh, glue and glitter. Uh, and I'm going to do it differently to what I normally do. I'm going to come up. And I'm going to show you in a second what I've done. Let me just show you before I do the others quickly. So normally, for those of you that see me all the time, you'll know that I usually go on the edge. I usually go on the edge of all my layers for the cut for the glitter. This time, look, I've gone up to the edge of the embossed piece of card. So we're almost framing. We're almost framing that glit the glitter, framing that embossed piece of card. It's quite a nice effect. Have a go. Try it. Show me what your results are in the Facebook group. It's just a different look. So we're still going to end up with a lovely crisp white edge on this card. So we'll do this glittering, we'll do the sentiment, and then hopefully by the time we've done that, all the painting will have dried and we can put this card together. There are no more embellishments going on this card, apart from the butterflies. So Diamond Dazzle, as ever. And I'm only doing one layer. I'm leaving the rest plain because we have got to go around the oval. Look how Diamond Dazzle just brings everything to life. In a sparkly kind of sense, not in a literal sense. Oh, look at that look. Pretty, pretty. Uh, incidentally, if you're watching this over the weekend, if you're watching this over the weekend of the coronation, um, do join me on Monday night for my Facebook YouTube live. So Monday night, what date will it be on Monday? Let's have a look and I can tell you the date. Uh, so Monday the 7th, 8th. So Monday the 8th at 7pm, you can either join me here on YouTube or live on Facebook. So I do the live on YouTube and Facebook at 7 p.m. on a Monday evening. And I'm gonna be giving you a sneaky peek of new stamps that are launching on the 12th of May. So sneaky peek and demo with the new stamps that are launching on the 12th of May. And you don't want to miss it. So I always do a giveaway as well. So there's always a giveaway on my live. So do join me. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll do all this again at the end. I'm just saying it while I'm layering this up. So I'm just popping some foam tape on this. And that will be going in the centre. Just you know, That's a little tip for you when you've got foam tape on. You can manipulate it. There you go. You can manipulate manipulate it when it's got foam tape on. So that's going in the centre of our card. So just pop that there because we can't do that until we've done the corners. Oh, look at my coffee. Look, I never even drank half any of it. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. And now, of course, it's freezing. Right, let's get the sentiment done. So remember I told you at the beginning that the Floral Curios collection comes with, if you're going for the complete collection on the website, the Floral Curios collection comes with the Smudge Sentiments. Um, I'm going to use, I don't know whether we've got any of these, these were a limited edition, but I'm going to use the decorative banners and mini sentiments. You'll just need to search on the website for them. The, uh, so just, just put min, mini sentiments and, in the search bar and see what comes up. 
And when I designed these, I specifically designed them, look, to coordinate with the Floral Curios collection. So if you look at that banner, you can see some of the daisies in there, some of the white, uh, some of the rounded flower, the same foliage. You've got a plain banner and you've also got the same with this banner. And I'm going to go with the plain banner, I think, for this. Or should I? Let's have a look. Let's see which looks better at the bottom of the O. Yeah, I'm going with the plain banner. And I'm going to stamp and emboss this. And we are going to, we are going to emboss the sentiment as well. Now I'm doing this on a block rather than on the platform. This is the scrap piece of card I had from my... I'll do it on the front. From my uh, first layer of heat embossing. And I'm just doing this on the acrylic block just to be a bit quicker. So always do your, send, your, your outside first. I find that easier. Oh, we could have it either way. Oh, I think I might go that way. So just hold it for a second. Sorry, I've just knocked the camera with the heat gone. So we're going to heat emboss the, centre, uh, the banner before we do the sentiment. And that just means you've got something to line it up with. If you do it the other way around, it just it means you're going to be uh, you're going to be trying to line up around a sentiment, which is not always easy. It's easier to do it the other way around. Or I find it easier to do it the other way around. So just put that to one side, and as ever, we are heating from underneath. You make sure your heat gun is hot before you start there. See, I like the banner both ways. I'm trying to see which way it would look. I'm going to have it with the scrolls at the bottom. So now we'll do the sentiment. I'll change my wipe because that one's covered in paint. Put that one back where it belongs. And then we'll go for the sentiment. So we've got lots of sentiments in here. Um, what shall we have? Very best wishes. Someone special with lots of love. Have a great day. Happy birthday. On your special day. Oh, there's too many choices. Let's have with lots of love. With lots of love. That's a nice... It just covers everything then, doesn't it? So I'm going to emboss this one as well. So a little tip for you when you're heat embossing teeny tiny sentiments. It's definitely, definitely easier if you're heat embossing. Forgive my head if it comes in the shot. If you're heat embossing tiny sentiments to do it with a block rather than your stamping platform because you'll press too hard. And just hold it in place for a second and then lift it. So don't press too hard with mini sentiments because it just splodges them and spoils them. Silver embossing powder. Oh yeah, that should be lovely. Thank you very much. And we are now getting towards the latter stages of this demo. I did think about an hour and a half, so we're not doing bad. And I am going to heat this from underneath as well. I'm just going to have to turn this one towards me so I can see it. I don't want to overheat it. That's how quick it, that's how quick it is, though. 
Oh, that's so beautiful. Uh, look at that one. With lots of love. And I'm going to cut that out quickly. Let's pop the sentiment back. Always put your little stamps back while you're using them. Because you know as well as I do, everybody, that the little stamps are the ones that you lose. So if you put them back straight away, you're not going to lose them. But I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to give it a little bit of a white outline. Just a little bit. So I'm cutting on the outside of the design. Don't worry. Don't worry, I will fix that middle part. <laughs> Oops, it's just easier to it's just easier to cut out when you've got less card to cut around. The only reason I'm giving it this white outline is so that it stands off the card when it's when I put it on. And this really is an easy card to recreate. It's just time. And it's a simple card to Cut, uh, to create it's just time with the embossing and the colouring right so let's see if we are dry and oh look at that how beautiful is that so here we go so the corners are going on first the corners are going on first I'm not shaping anything by the way I'm keeping it all oops oh Fell. There's a little bit of orange still on there. That's that'll teach me. Yeah, I'm not shaping everything. I'm keeping everything flat. So I'm not even curling. I'm not even curling the flowers or anything. So the corners are going on first. Now, as ever, I'm using glue gel for mine, so I can raise them off the page a little bit. And we'll just choose a corner. Remember, this is my idea of a clean and simple card. But clean and simple doesn't have to be... It, it can be what you want it to be, basically. It doesn't have to be... Um, it doesn't have to be too much or too simple. It can be whatever you want it to be. So I'm now just going up to the lines of the um, of the glitter. Look. Oh, I, I love that already. Before I even do anything else to this card, I love it. So when you're putting glue gel on, uh, come up, don't go too close to the edge. Because when you squash it down, which is what I like to do, when you squash it down, you don't want it to be seen. You don't want it to be seen on the uh, outside of the card. Oh, Phil, I love this card so much. And you imagine this done in blues and pinks or whatever your favorite color is. It's gonna be amazing. Which is the top? That's the top. I'll bring it all in for you to do a lovely close up when we get to that stage. So do try and keep them, do try and keep them at the same sort of height so it doesn't look odd that 
that's fabulous. There's, there's just something about white cards that's very, very elegant looking. I've got far too much glue on that now. That's because I'm talking. I'm getting too excited. My favourite bit. If you know me, you know that this is my favourite bit. I love all the details. I love all the bits, all the crafty jobs we do to get to this stage. Oh my word, look at that. <laughs> and now the centerpiece. So we know the centerpiece is going to go in the middle, look. And we know it is going to be glittered. And I've purposefully left the glittering for this until the end. And those of you that know me will know why I've left the glittering for this till the end. Because we can cover up any glue gel. And I'm going to put glue gel on this just so that I can raise it a little bit more than the foam tape. Just a little bit. I don't want it too high. Because we have got the decoupage layers to go on as well. But I do like dimension. And don't you panic if you can see me struggling with this one little tube of glue gel. There's loads in it. And I've got another one there. So remember the large flower we said was going to the top. So let's just get that in the center. I love this card so much already. That is just so, so beautiful. So that looks more or less central. I'm just going to wiggle the oval a little bit. I'm not going to glitter it yet. I think we need a bit of colour on this. Just bear with, bear with. I'm just going to put a little tint of lilac on the edge of that sentiment. Just a little tint. Just on the, that's too much. Just on the outside, look. told you all to do the dabbing and what am I doing I'm just going in gung-ho just I just felt it needed that little touch of lilac on the outside yeah that's better nearly done better look when that dries look we've just got that lovely tint of lilac so now we can start building up our layers of the decoupage so we've got the full image first look and this is where it starts to come to life everybody why is that there we go that's it that was just bugging me a bit so now let's go. So I am using the glue gel as ever for this. And I will squash it down so it's not too high. I do want some dimension, but I don't want it to be really high. So let's just line up one of these flowers. And pop, push that down. Oh, look at this card, it's so beautiful. Even if I say so myself. If somebody sent me this card, I would be over the moon with it. 
Then the next layer. So this is where it all starts to come together. The best part. And remember, avoid the edges. So this one goes there. That's just, oh, I love that. Love it, love it, love it. That was me, that was me tutting at the glue gel. <laughs> and even with my shoddy cutting out look, that looks really quite fabulous. So now you know why, if you remember right at the very beginning, if, if I'd have been doing this for myself, I would probably have coloured around the edges of the flowers underneath. But as a straight on image, you won't, uh, you won't see it. Gorgeous. And then the last one. This is, this is just stunning. Right, I'm going to start oohing and ahhing at myself. And we'll put this lovely sentiment on. Uh, I've got to glitter around the outside and I've also got to glitter the butterflies. So we've just got three, I'm trying to look for my pointy tweezers. Just got three butterflies going on here. And the butterflies are from the shabby, the shabby butterflies. Uh, I honestly don't know if we've got any of the butterfly dyes left, but the the one of my favourite butterflies. So you've got I've just gone for the plain ones, and the reason I've gone for the plain ones is because that is enough. So I'm just having a couple of plain glittered butterflies around the outside of that. So I'm going to use my pointy tweezers and just bend those back, and then just glitter the wings. And I don't normally go in for this three, three, five, seven thing. But I have got three on here, two baby ones and two uh, and one larger one. So let's get the sentiment in, uh, glittered and the butterflies glittered and then stick them on and then we are done. So I'm just going around the outside. Where I am when my glue decides to work. Thank you. So I'm just going around the outside of the wings. I'm not being too delicate with it. Because it's just going to be glittery. Like so. Same with the next one. Nearly done. So I wasn't far off. I did say an hour, about an hour and a half and we're just, just over that. And apart from the heat embossing of the corners, I've done this all from scratch for you. And obviously the die cutting, nobody wants to watch me die cutting. And then the last one, 
remember as well that the glue dries clear so we're just going to be left with the sparkle from the glitter that's why I don't worry about being too neat when you're doing this kind of thing because it all just looks pretty in the end like so and then I'm just going to do a little bit around the sentiment uh, I feel like it needs a bit of glitter oh it does it does it yeah it does so I'm just going to I'm not going around all the way around it. I'm just doing a bit on the inside look. That's why I like these little banners. You can just do a lot with them. It just needed that little bit of sparkle. There you are, look. Right, let's put these on. And then we'll get the glitter around the... Oh, I need to do that first. Apologies, everybody. Apologies. I need to glitter the oval. So I'm going all the way around the edge with the glue around the oval. And the reason I've glittered this at the end is so that I can let the, glam the diamond dazzle run underneath the layers of decoupage. And what happens is, if, there's any, if there is any, you can't actually see any, but if there is any, um, what do you call it, glue gel showing, the diamond dazzle that I'm putting on this card now will catch it. It's just one of my things I like to do. I don't like to see unsightly glue gel. So if you can make it look sparkly... If anybody does see it, it doesn't matter. There we go. I, I love this card so much. In fact, I might even make another one in a different colourway. Plenty of glitter on it. Oops. So sentiment is going on first. I'm just going to shape that banner just a little bit. Just a little bit, a little bit more. Come on, Ben. Oops, don't bend it. And that's going to go there. That's going to sit just there. I know I'm faffing, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make sure it's angled properly. And it's sat in the middle. Yeah, perfect. And now the butterflies. So I have got three butterflies, remember. Two small ones and one larger one. So I'm just going to see which way around I want these. Let's just see. I do know me have the big one at that side. No, I'm going that way. Far too much glue gel for that. I'm just going to scrape some of that off. Oh, that's enough for all three. Right, so the big one's going on first. And for those of you that know me, you know what I'm going to do now. I like my butterflies flying off the page. So I have them angled so that they are angled like that off the page. Can you see that? Yep, you can. So the, the face, the, the face is sticking up. I'm going to do the same with the little ones here. Last one, the glue is not dry yet on the um, on the glitter, but I've got away with it, I think. 
And then the very last job, the very, very, very last job is... You might know what I'm going to say. The very last job is to pop a couple of little random gems on. As you know, I like random gems. So... When I was getting the when I was getting the gems and everything ready, what I had in my head was the silver star pearls because they are silver to match the embossing powder. And then I thought, oh, what about the Aurora gems? Because the Aurora gems, if you look at that, they have the Aurora in, so you get the little tints of lilac and green, which match perfectly. And then I thought, oh, what about just the diamond? But I think I'm gonna go with. I think I'm going to go with my initial instinct, which was the silver, the silver pearls. So where's my pickup tool? There you are. And I just like to have a couple of random gems. It's just a little, it's just a little detail. And I've one there as well, just so it's not a four. It's a personal thing, it's just something I like to do. I don't want the big ones, thank you. And of course you can guarantee all the ones that I want are upside down. <laughs> one more. Oh, come on, gotcha. And we are done. Oh, no, I've missed one. Missed one. I knew, I knew I'd missed one. Because I know I said five and not four. There we go. And we are done. So I'll just put the lid on everything. I will show you the card in close-up detail. So that is a clean and simple, and it is simple, and it is relatively clean for me, uh, using the Floral Curio stamps. So literally, that is the easiest card in the world to make. It's just, a you just need a little bit of time for the stamping and embossing, and I would, I would definitely, definitely just colour the flowers underneath. But if I did that while we were here today, we would have been forever. So look how gorgeous this stamp is in the silver embossing powder. Absolutely stunning. With the corners, the painted detail from the chalk paints. So we've got the three shades of lilac going on there. The corners, the butterfly dies, and that is really, really, really easy for you to do, honestly. Just set yourself a couple of hours. That corner is bugging me, so I'll fix that later. And there we go. So I'll do a quick recap for you, if I can get everything. So the paints that I've used today are from the chalk paints, and they are... So on the website, everything, everything, where is it? There we go. Everything will be on my website, honeypotcrafts.co.uk. So you just need to go in the search bar or search for the product. So uh, the Flawless Media Chalky Acrylic Paints, Pretty Periwinkle, African Violet, Soft Pistachio. You can obviously buy them in sets or individually as well. And then for the flower, for the inside of the flower, custard slice and perfectly pumpkin. And then the stamps that we have used today, and I'll just do a reminder just in case you've, you didn't hear me at the beginning. So the stamps we've used today are one of my all time favorites. I haven't put that stamp away yet, but I will in a second. And I keep coming back and back and back and back to the Floral, floral Curios collection. So what we've used today are the Posy, the Floral Curios Posy Collage, the Posy Corners, and of course we've got the Posy Circles, which I haven't used, but we could have used those in the background. The rest of the collection is 
the collage, the corsage, sorry. So this is the posy set with the big flower, the two roses and the pansy. The corsage, this corsage has the two roses and the daisies. So the same format, the corners, the focal image, the collage and the circles. And then the last one that completes this set is the smudge sentiments. So currently on the website, these are already as a bundle. So this set of seven stamps already has a discount of 15%. Uh, currently, if you're watching over the coronation weekend, which is uh, the uh, 6th and 7th of May, we have an additional 20% site-wide on the website. So you'll get a further 20% off, which is a massive 35% off this collection of stamps. That's just crazy. And I use them constantly. They're not even out of date. Um, so get on there. Treat yourself if you can. I'll do, a, I'll do a proper photograph of this and I will pop it on my Facebook page when I get a chance. And there you go. So we've done a uh, clean and simple white on white floral curios card with just a hint of colour from the gorgeous chalk paints. How beautiful is this card? So thank you, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'll do a quick reminder um, that the quick links to everything that I've used today will be in the description for the video. I always do that so it's easy for you to just click on them and get straight to the website so you don't miss out. Uh, please, please, please like and follow my Sentimentally Yours Facebook page. And if you haven't yet already, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the alarm bell. It's in that corner, I think. Uh, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out. I do, a, I do a YouTube stroke Facebook Live every Monday evening at 7pm. And the next one on Monday is a sneaky peek. Uh, you can also um, follow me on Facebook. So just search for Phil Martin or Crafty Phil Martin. And I am also on Twitter, Phil M Martin. And also on Instagram, yeah, I'm everywhere, Phil M Martin. Remember, it's two L's. And if you do use TikTok, I'm also on TikTok with Phil M Martin as well. So thank you, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed that. I wanted to show you how you can take a stamp that looks relatively mixed media style and make it look oops oh, and make it look very very pretty because you can you're in control so thank you everybody have a lovely day and i will catch up with you in facebook thanks everybody bye bye